in intro, as well as some of your later classes, you will start recording audio for your short films on a external audio device like a Zoom recorder or a Tascam. Sometimes students aren't able to access a Zoom recorder because they're all checked out and they'll use their smartphone. Um, so whatever audio device you use is fine, but a Tascam or Zoom recorder is going to produce a better quality audio than your smartphone. You are going to have to be really precise on how you organize things and how you do different takes. Every time you start the video, you want to make sure you start the audio. Every time you stop the video, you want to make sure you stop the audio. So you have the same number of files that you have with the video. Otherwise, it can get kind of confusing and you might not know which file goes with which video clip. You can definitely adjust what the files are named inside your Tascam or other recorder. Mine is called Sydney. I name all of my gear after horses that I rode growing up that I enjoyed, and Sydney was one of those. Um, so I can also adjust it by the date. Uh, so there's different ways that you can name it when you're recording it in a Tascam or Zoom recorder. Or when you're using your smartphone, you can definitely make sure to save after the smartphone recording is finished, save it as like re record one or clip one or audio one. Just make sure that it goes along with what you have in your video camera. You also want to be careful on how you organize things. This comes into play like we talked about during our first Adobe Premiere tutorial. I have an audio folder. Within that audio folder, I have a director's track from when we recorded the director in studio, as well as the singer's audio from the task cam. I have a folder for exports, a folder for music, and the project file, as well as my raw footage. Now, I already know that Capture 30 goes with this clip right here for audio. And generally, when you're recording your audio on an external device, you want to make sure you're still also recording some audio on the camera because it allows you to make sure that things are syncing up properly. However, you don't have to. In this instance, we had an issue with somebody adjusting the ampl amplifier in the audio, so uh, in our audio room in the studio. So our audio is extremely overmodulated and distorted, so you can't really hear anything. Um, however, you know, there are some instances where people, students forget to turn the audio back on on the camera. You can still match things up. You just are going to have to match it up visually. Um, and it will be a slightly a little bit more difficult, but it's not going to be impossible. So some of the things that can help you match things up with this is using markers. And a marker can be used to um, add a chapter marker or it can simply be used to let you know where you need to match something up, like audio to video. Um, if you do not have a clip, uh, be it audio or video, selected in your timeline, then the marker will go on the timeline. And then if you move your clip around, like if I'm here and I hit M for marker, you can see it adds a little marker here. But if I move my clip, now the marker is at a different point in the video. So you need to make sure that you make your markers on the actual clip. And to make sure that happens, you simply just click on the clip. You can tell it's highlighted because it's a lighter color. Now, there are different ways that you can match things up. Um, there are clapperboards or sticks. They even have apps for that for your smartphone or a tablet. You can also just simply use somebody clapping their hands. It's pretty easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this with Spacebar, and she clapped her hands. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the left or the right arrow because it allows us to go back one frame at a time to make sure we get it right when the hands hit. So then I'm going to go ahead and press M for marker. And now you can see I have a marker on my video clip. This is going to make it easier when I add an M for marker on my audio file when the I hear the clap. Then I can just use the snapping tool with this on, then it'll snap the two marker points together. So now I'm going to load my audio of the uh, singing onto my timeline. Now it already has a marker on it, um, but I'll show you how you can line it up. Unfortunately, your clips are not generally going to be the same length, so you can't just say, oh, I'll match the in point to the out point. You can see that that's way off. She's already talking, whereas here she's not talking in the video. So what we're going to do is I like to expand the track so I can see the audio waveforms easier. Sometimes if you have low level audio or uh, the sound is quiet, you're not going to be able to see the audio waveform to match it up as easily. So one way you can do that is by going to the wrench 
and this allows you to change different ways things are displayed on your timeline. And I can go down and say expand all tracks and it's going to increase them and now you can see we can see the different audio waves. The other thing you can do if your audio waves aren't visible is you can go to your wrench and make sure that show audio waveform is selected. Now the beginning of my task cam it always records a very loud beep because you can sync the task cam to an actual camera and so that the camera would have the beep as well as the task cam. So that's another way to match it up. Um, however, we did not do that because we were shooting in a multi-cam situation with our studio cameras. So if I hit spacebar, it is going to have a loud beep, normal for my task cam. And I just heard the clap. So I'm going to hit spacebar and I'm going to zoom in so I can see where that clap waveform is and I'm going to move my playhead to where that waveform is and I'm going to hit M for marker to apply a marker. That one's already there because I've already synced this audio before. Then if you have your snapping on, which you can see is on because the blue magnet is on, if I hit S it will turn it off, if I hit S again it will turn it back on. I'm going to zoom out and now with snapping turned on, the nice thing is, is I can drag it and it's going to snap to, snap to that marker. And you can see because it has that line there and I can let go. So there are definitely are some advantages of having snapping on. I can then play it to check it. The clap looked good, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go and make sure that we have the singer's audio. So I'm going to move to where she's actually, you can see her. It's a little dark, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick fix um, that I do. It's a quick and dirty fix. This is not the best way to fix exposure. But in a pinch, if I need to do something quickly, I'll just double-click the video file, load it back up into my source file. I'll grab only the video and drag it over the video and make sure it lines up. Again, snapping is great because I can make sure it snaps to the ends, the in and the out point. Now I'll double click and load this top file up here into my source file. I can then go to effects and go down to opacity and if I go to blend mode, screen will actually lighten everything. It's not a great way to do this, but it is a quick and dirty way if I need to check something to make sure it's lined up. Um, screen lightens, multiply darkens, soft light saturates your colors while making it a little bit darker. These overlay blend modes are ways that you can also adjust to make things look a little bit trippy and dreamlike um, and have different videos over each other at the same time. And they could be different to kind of give a dreamlike weird sequence. However, I'm doing this just so I can see if her singing matches up. So now I'm going to go back to my timeline. Remember you do want your audio between negative 6 and 12 so it's a little low so I would apply an audio gain filter and increase it. And if you're still not sure you can go from instead of fit, you can go to uh, 150% and I can check. And we can see that it's synced up properly. Uh, so now I can save it. And now I have my audios uh, synced with my video. So it's pretty easy as long as you follow good organization when you're on site. So again, making sure that your camera is rolling and your audio is rolling, and then you make sure the camera sees the hands in the frame and that the audio device can record the clap, have someone clap. Then you just need to make sure every time you stop the camera, you stop recording audio. Every time you start, you restart. So that way you have the same number of files making sure that you name the files appropriately so that way you know which audio file goes with which video file. So organization is extremely important. Then all you need to do is bring it into Adobe Premiere, use the markers and your left and right arrow often, and then match things up and you're good to go.